because you guys you made videos growing up as kids right like you guys shot movies and stuff like that yeah when did he because he was he the first person in your friend group to go on like online and start posting videos on youtube uh he was the only one yeah. uh and he uh yeah he he was yes yes he was the first and only one was that weird for you guys at the time? You're like, yo, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I think to an extent, uh, I, I, because of how close Joey and I are and were, I think I knew him. I, I think confidently we could say that I knew him better than our other friends. Um, and there were always parts of Joey that were a little more reserved, you know. Um, and I was, I was, you know, the loud one, and he was there with me, and we were having a great time. But I think he definitely you know kept certain things and whether it be opinions or whatever you know to himself so i think when the video started coming out our friends started to see parts of him that they had gotten glimpses of and maybe not known as well um so it was just you know kind of funny you know i there's no other way to no other way to describe it it was funny to, uh, i think some of my friends reacted that way and then i think it, it started to get different when those videos started catching some steam you know and that snowball kept rolling and rolling and at what point was that like how long had he been doing it before that really kind of started to take off um you know joe has the uh we can call it a curse of just good looks <laughs> so he's always uh you know whether it be from myspace or you know whatever you know he was always joe from something you know, so it was Joe from MySpace, Joe from Facebook, uh, and then, you know, eventually became Joe from YouTube. And I think around, I think I would say around like early 2011, I would say is when it really started to catch on, you know, he started getting recognized, I think locally, um, for the videos. And then, you know, they started spreading, you know, cause that was really in the early, early days of YouTube and social media, even even social media to an extent. So he got in when it really was early. So he had a lot easier of a time, uh, you know, marketing himself because it was just kind of being spread like wildfire. And when did you start to be in the videos? Cause like I tried to go back, but obviously there's so much stuff that's been like archived and pulled off. Like that thing I found about uh, the fruit roll up was literally like an un, an unlisted YouTube video that was linked in a blog post from like some date that I clicked on. Like that's how I found that. But like for the most part, there's like nothing there pre like six years ago. So is, when did you start to kind of get involved in the videos? Um, I can't remember the first, but you know, it was tough cause I was at college and I was staying there and I was, you know, I wasn't coming home every weekend or, you know, maybe every other weekend or every three weeks or something. Um, so I, I would say, you know, in the early goings on of him, you know, making these videos, I was in a couple. But, uh, you know, it, it definitely picked up more as I was able to drive and I was able to pay for, you know, a, a train ticket to come to New York. So I, I, had, I was in some of the early ones, but for the most part, I, I mean, I would say if in its entirety, he built, you know, himself by himself. Of course. I was just more so looking at it from the, the point of like, you guys film videos growing up. So when you started being in these videos and he had started to have like a huge following, was like, was it weird? Like, did you know that there was going to be hundreds of thousands of people watching these videos? And like, was that a trip or was it like, cause your guys' rapport is so good and you've known each other for so long that it was just like any other video? Um, you know, I think, you know, him and I have spoken about this to an extent as well. Uh, and I think there was a part of me that I didn't, I've always been very, happy you know for him because at the end of the day whether i'm involved or not all i care about is his success uh and um i think you know in in when we had started doing these videos i i think he wanted me because i went away i left i went to college and i think if i had not i would have been there and you know looking back on it i joke around and say like you know i'm the idiot that went and you know got a degree and you turned yourself into this you know social media star um, so it wasn't weird, but I definitely had a little bit of FOMO, you know, and, um, but the, the fear of miss, the fear of missing out there was completely overmasked by seeing how he was blowing up, doing what he truly loved. And he worked fucking hard, dude. Like not, and not only did he work hard, like he had to ignore a lot of people saying a lot of the same shit, you know, a lot of like. Hey man, you know, you're not like this, you need more of an option, you know, more options for yourself. So, uh, yeah. 
and like i think that's to, to your point like any one of that scale on social media like it wasn't by accident you know what i mean but like even when you did come back because you were still in the videos like even though like you left you were still back every once in a while was there pressure from the perspective of just like when you're on camera you know that you're not just filming this and your family's going to watch it on the tv in the living room later and it's just a home movie but it's like something you're filming for like hundreds of thousands of people that are watching um not necessarily because i think at the end of the day all i've ever cared about and i think joey's the same way is i just if i make him laugh then i'm okay you know like i am my own worst critic and i will drive myself nuts absolutely fucking nuts if i sit there and try to put pen to paper and come up with things that are going to be funny for the general mass because i think that what i find funny is not necessarily what everyone else finds funny so anytime i would go on my main priority is just to make the person you know to make him laugh whether he be sitting next to me or behind the camera you know filming it so um and that's and that's all i've thought about because it, if i would sit there and try to worry about everybody else it would drive me nuts i, I legitimately would go absolutely <laughs> ape shit and i think that's important for people to hear though like anyone that wants to start a podcast or wants to start making stuff like you're never going to make anything that's for everyone you know what i mean so pick that audience of one and run, run with that um and then so when you graduated school like was there a formal thing when you became more of a part of santa Gato studios and like the stank podcast came out like was that more of a formal thing or did that just kind of happen organically um you know he had he had approached me and said like hey you know again i i went to school i got these degrees uh, and I said to myself, like, I am not going to make what I went for a waste. You know, I'm going to use my degrees as best as I can. He'd come to me and he had asked me, you know, to do some stuff. And, you know, we, we, we did do some stuff, you know, obviously with the stank and, you know, now where I am with the basement yard. Um, I think it's always been, he kind of gave me the, the, the tools and said like, listen, if you want to come on, you want to come on board, I am here. And I, and you just let me know. And uh, in doing that, you know, we found, I think, a good middle ground where I can, you know, move away realistically and, you know, live a life outside of New York and still be involved, you know, as much as possible. 